My motivation definitely scaled with the company. So my, my motivation changed from, from the starting point to, to today. I was first motivated just because I was building the product for myself, mm -hmm. selfishly. I was having a baby, I wasn't looking to start a company and I wanted to solve the problem. Once I started solving that problem, I realized a lot of um, people had the same problem. And just, just to clarify what that problem was, I needed a place to buy and sell my stuff where I felt safe to do so. Turned out that our um, niche um, audience were moms um, or, or people about to be, women about to be moms. And once they started using the product, they started writing about it. They started emailing into us and I started learning about uh, their stories. And all of a sudden, Virage Sale was bringing back Christmas. People could afford Christmas gifts. Um, Virage Sale was, um, I remember in the early days, I was, a mom wrote to me and said I was able to get my son finally some braces. So my motivation then went from solving you know, my problem to other people's problem to stretching family budgets. Once we raised our seed rounds, we raised a seed round here in Montreal. We raised a million dollars. After that, we grew to a million users really, really quickly. But it wasn't those million users, it was the retention. It was what those million users were doing. So they were coming to the app every day, six times a day, about half of, half of them were doing that. So those numbers um, you know, in, in Silicon Valley are numbers that Snapchat had when, when they first started out. And so the investors of Snapchat, the investors of Apple, the investors of Google, so Sequoia Capital and Lightspeed Ventures, um, got in touch with us and we ended up raising $34 million from them. And so then my motivation changed to, all right, I'm gonna stretch family budgets all over the world and they're going to help me do that. Um, because when you raise money from uh, investors like that, it really opens a lot of doors. And that became my whole company. My whole company was about stretching these family budgets and if anybody um, if you asked anybody who worked at Virage Sale they would they would say that the mission of this company was to do that and when you talk about scaling up a team and company culture it's not about um, the ping pong table that you see startups are, are notorious for their their beer fridge and their their ping pong table that's not what company culture is um, it's really about the people working within the company um, having the same motivation that you do as a founder and making sure that that's communicated every day, rinsed and repeat to get everybody motivated at the same time. And great companies are built when full teams are motivated just like the founders are. You know, mining has been the same for so many years. I mean, I think what, what motivates me to, to transform it, not only is, is there, I think, increasing pressure, social pressure, whether it's environmental, whether it's, um, you know, people, people wanting uh, better support for communities, whether it's um, communities developing. I mean, one of the things that the mining industry does do is it develops nations. You know, I, I keep saying Australia would still be a penal colony if it wasn't for gold. Mining does add all of that value. Um, but it demonstrably hasn't changed. You know, my great grandfather was a, uh, was a Cornish miner and he would look at what we're doing now and he would recognise a lot of it. Um, you know, whereas if he was a medical practitioner, you know, I'd taken him into a GP's office, he would be, you know, very bemused about it, most of what's in the, in the GP's office now. Um, so I think, you know, we, we haven't changed and there is so much opportunity for us to change and so much opportunity for us to, you know, add more to communities, add, um, you know, think about the environment differently, think about the way we mine differently. Um, and, you know, with all the pressures of, um, you know, changing society, but also all of the benefit of some of this new technology that's coming, I think, it, you know, it is an opportunity now to really leverage that. And so, you know, what excites me is not only to, to radically change the industry and radically change the benefits that the industry can give to the world, um, but also, you know, just working with individuals within mining or even outside of mining and see how people start realising that they can do things fundamentally different than what they did before and, and have that confidence and that excitement um, being reinvigorated. There is no greater way to f feel the accomplishment than creating a company from the, from the start, from the ground up, seeing people come in, hiring people, get interested into your project and then, you know, some, some, some you know, guys have been with me for three companies, 15 years, I've seen them with no wife and then wife and then kids and they move from one company to another. It's a, it's, it's 
I know it's not like the, the, the specific goal of the company, but seeing all of that materialize, and especially your product being bought and being used, mm -hmm. that's, that's a great feeling. We need to create an environment where scaling companies can have support, mm -hmm. can have a support system in place. And PwC, PwC and other firms for the last many, many, many years have demonstrated that they're very, very good at supporting CGI and super large companies and they have a numerous, super large range of expertise. But in terms of speed and agility and how to support scaling companies, it didn't work. So I, I happily, and uh, after numerous discussion, joined the firm to create a program to support scaling companies. You know, when you start a company, what got you to that starting point and, and your initial growth is not what's going to get you to the end result, to your IPO, to your sale, to whatever. Um, so I think along the way I realized that I had to build a culture that would, that would, be, um, that would be okay with change. The firm was going to change a lot over time. It started off with 10 people that were doers, 10 people that could do anything from code, because it was a technology company, um, to uh, mail Christmas cards to the admins that ran our communities. They were all startup people. And later on, we would have to you know, start hiring executives and, and a team like that. Um, but th the thing is, you start from 10, and then when you, when you start growing, you just can't do the same things that you did with those 10. And then the culture tends to change, and, 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 and then you go through um, you know, the economy changes, sometimes you go through a round of layoffs, and so you have to kind of ride those sails, and as long as you've got a lot of passion in what you're building, the passion will sail you through those things. But you just have to realize that no company started here and just ended here like this. It, it really is a game of, of a roller coaster.